So today I'm going to introduce quadratic reciprocity and then there's so much more to talk about under this umbrella, but we're just going to look at what it is and do a few examples. So start with our setup um, as has been in the previous videos as well. Our modulus is a positive integer. You can never have a modulus that isn't. Um, the difference here is that we're going to have a be an integer with a restricted to being between 1 and m minus 1. So if a were bigger than m, you would just reduce it mod m. The only thing that's getting ignored here are things like a equals 0 or a equals m. Anything that's going to reduce to 0 mod m isn't one of the valid options for a when we're talking about quadratic reciprocity. And as you understand this more deeply, I think it will become more clear why we don't consider the possibility of a equals zero. So that aside, um, the main question in quadratic reciprocity is x squared congruent to a mod m, does that have a solution? Is there a value x between one and m minus one such that this congruence is true? And if so, then we call A a quadratic residue mod M. So if there's a solution, it's a quadratic residue. And if there's not a solution, then we call A a quadratic non-residue. So for example, let's look at whether or not 1 is a quadratic residue mod 6. Um, spoiler, 1 is always going to be a quadratic residue mod anything bigger than or equal to 2. And that's just because one is already a square, one is equal to one squared. So x equals one is a solution to this equation, x squared congruent to one mod six. So since there's an x such that this congruence holds, then one is a quadratic residue mod six. It's also worth noting that one isn't our only solution. Um, so x equals five is also a solution. And the easiest way to see that is observing that 5 is congruent to minus 1 mod 6. So 5 squared is congruent to minus 1 squared, but minus 1 squared is just positive 1 mod 6. So we actually have two different solutions in this case for x. Now let's take another example. Um, is 3 a quadratic residue mod 7? Um, so again, if it were 4, like if I were asking if 4 were a quadratic residue, it would be straightforward. You would say, well, 4 is 2 squared, so of course it's going to be. But some of the numbers are less straightforward because we reduce mod 7. So if we're asked if something like, is 3 a quadratic residue? If we're not sure, then what we have to do, at least at this point, with the knowledge that we have, is we have to square all of the numbers one through six, so from one to m minus one, and see if any of them turn out to be three mod seven. So one squared, two squared are straightforward. Three squared is nine, which is congruent to two mod seven. So that does mean that two is a quadratic residue mod seven. And then, so that's three, four squared ends up being two, five squared ends up being four, and 6 squared ends up being 1. So 3 doesn't appear anywhere in this list. We did not get 3 when we squared any of our numbers. And since 3 did not show up in that list of squares, then 3 is not a quadratic residue. So it's a quadratic non-residue mod 7. I also rewrote the squares here because I do want to point something else out. So here are the numbers I squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can see that you know, 1 squared was 1, 4, 2, 3 squared is 2. But you can see a symmetry. So I wrote, drew a line down the middle of this because our um, squares, mod 7, end up being 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1. And the reason for this symmetry is that if you look at 4, I wrote it up here, but 4 is congruent to minus 3 mod 7. So 4 squared is the same as minus 3 squared, which means that 4 squared mod 7 is going to be the same as 3 squared mod 7. Similarly, 5 squared is going to be the same as 2 squared mod 7, and 6 squared will be the same as 1 squared mod 7.
So because of this symmetry, um, in that last example, we did all of the squares, mod 7, to decide whether or not 3 was a square. So now we want to see if 10 is a quadratic residue mod 13. And because of what we just discussed, we now know that we don't have to square every single possible number between 1 and 12 in this case. We just have to square half of them and check whether or not 10 appears in that list. If we had an even number like mod 14 or something, then if you tried to do 13 over 2 to decide how many numbers to check, you'd get 6.5. So you'd have to check seven of the numbers. So if your modulus is even, you check slightly more than half of the numbers by squaring them. But if your modulus is odd, you check half of the numbers. So since our modulus is 13, then we square 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 squared is 16, which is congruent to 3 mod 13. 5, so 5 squared is 25. Um, 25 minus 13 is 12. And then 6 squared is 36. So 36 minus 13 minus 13 leaves us with 10. The solution that we got from our list of squares is x equals 6. But because of symmetry, um, we also can know that 7, because 7 is 13 minus 6, so 7 is congruent to negative 6 mod 13. So 7 is a solution as well. The solutions, if we're solving x squared congruent to 10 mod 13, we want to write out all of the solutions. And in this case, the solutions are x equals 6 and x equals 7. Like regular quadratic equations, they always have either 0, 1, or 2 solutions. And of course, 1 is in a way less common. You don't see that as much. So if you are solving quadratic um, congruence, like x squared congruent a mod m, um, you have to make sure that you either say there's no solution, it's a non-residue. And if there is a solution, you should determine whether or not there is one solution or two solutions in that case.